My name is Nelson Kakande. I'm a medical sociologist with a teaching profession background. I come from Uganda. I work with the Joint Clinical Research Center as a clinical, as a program coordinator for clinical operations and health service research training program. But I'm also the principal investigator for the International Extramural Research Associates Development Award by the NIHD. I'm here to walk you through the session on subcontract management, where I will look at what is a subcontract, who is a subcontractor, what are the responsibilities of a prime recipient, what are the issues that the prime recipient of a contractor would look up to when selecting a subcontractor or subcontractors, as the case may be, what are the responsibilities of a subcontractor, then we'll also look at the common challenges in managing subcontractor and issues that one would watch for to make an effective subcontractor management. What is a contract? A contract is an agreement between two or more parties that creates an obligation to perform a particular duty. In this case, we have a subcontractor and a primary recipient. The primary recipient is the organization or entity that is the direct recipient of the sponsor's funds and therefore the direct, the direct recipient of a contract. And this capacity, he assumes a number of responsibilities including managing of subcontractor. There is a growing number of prime recipients use subcontractor and that's why this makes management of subcontracting important. Let's look at what is a subcontract. A subcontract is an agreement to perform work on behalf of the prime. The subcontract provisions are influenced by the prime's contract. In this case, the two write out a statement of work. And the statement of work, they outline the procedures, the methods the subcontract will employ in accordance with the goals of the pro proposed project and in line with the prime recipient's contract. What are the roles of prime contractor? The prime contractor determines and justifies the work, the proportion of work to be done by subcontractor. He assesses and approves the contracting arrangements remain but he remains accountable to the sponsor for the performance of the subcontractor therefore he has to monitor the subcontractor's contractor's progress whether the subcontractor is compliant with rules and regulations that were set and prepare a written contract agreements with the subcontractor so he also comes up with a surveillance plan a surveillance plan is a performance tool. It's a tool to monitor the subcontractor, to find out whether he's in compliance with the provisions set forth. It identifies the deliverables, the costs, the schedules, the timeline. And as a prime contractor, you should rely on the subcontractor for the quality control. But, as the, but it's your responsibility as a prime to control, to, to, to follow for quality assurance. Let's look at the roles of subcontractors. They are supposed to provide specialized services to enhance the operational capacity and the competence and aim at maintaining quality control but bears the responsibilities of professional programmatic decision making and measurable performance requirements as may be agreed in the contract. Let's look at the basic information that is needed when you want to evaluate a subcontractor. You would like to know the company profile, the financial system, competence is very important, the capabilities, the skills of the employees, the appropriate accreditation, for example, if it's a laboratory, the relevant experience, and the desired resources. 
So you fully verify and you must be aware of the quality that you want. The timelines, whether the con subcontractor will, will comply and the available funding. Let's look at the general issues to consider when subcontracting. You would like to look at the requirements of the grant preparation, the policies and procedures governing the prime, the project monitoring procedures, the record management requirements, the accounting systems reporting, the budgeting, costs and expenditure control, personnel management, the travel regulations, and the performance measurements, where you look, you look at the deliverables and the milestones. At the level of applying for a grant, we also like to think about a subcontractor. So you want to follow what the grant requirements need. You look at the information on the scope, the contractual arrangements that are agreeable, the contact information of the subcontractor, you have to provide it, and also cater for them when you're making budgets. Let's look at the guide, guiding questions. If you want to evaluate yourself, if you are doing well, how do subcontractor keep you informed of the progress? How is your quality systems applied to your subcontractor? How do you keep your subcontractors informed of your client's requirements? How do you measure the effectiveness of your subcontractor? How do you seek continuous improvement in the performance of the subcontractor? In other words, how do you deal with the underperformance of the subcontractor? If you can answer these questions well, then you'll be doing well. Let's look at the common challenges in subcontracting. One of the challenges that is failure or subcontractor not being fully aware of your client's requirements. The relationship between the prime and the subcontractor may be a challenge, especially if it is largely informal. Therefore, I advise that you always make a written agreement where you spell out all the provisions to follow and the timelines, the deliverables, and what is expected of each one of you. You should like to avoid the bias in selecting a subcontractor. Therefore, you look for one that is competent. Other mistakes in subcontract arrangement include misallocation of resources, conflict of interest, for example, conflicts of interest can deter you from performing professionally. Inaccurate effort reporting is another common mistake. And weak, weak monitoring and evaluation on the behalf, on the part of the prime and on the part of the subcontractor is a common mistake. But all and all the mistake, if you have something written, if there's non-compliance with the special terms and conditions of the sponsor, that is a gross mistake. What are some of the common mistakes? One of the common mistakes is non-compliance with special terms and conditions of the sponsor, and as required by the prime in the subcontract. The other mistake is making unallowable costs, especially on the part of the subcontractor. The other one is misallocation of funds. And then the other one is conflict of interest. As we know, conflict of interest may deter somebody from performing and making professional decisions. Inaccurate effort reporting is another weakness. The other weakness is the poor performance of monitoring and evaluation. Okay, let's now look at the characteristics of effective subcontract arrangement. One of the most important is transparency and the clarity of what the subcontractors are, being, are supposed to do. We also love to make formal uh, arrangements between the prime and the subcontractor. 
make a written uh, make a written agreement with all provisions set and each one of you must understand each and every provision in the agreement the subcontractors should have a high degree of awareness of the prime's methods of working and the client's expectation you'd like to follow the surveillance plan that you've set uh, forth ahead in time so that you can monitor appropriately and report in a timely manner and you watch for deliverables so all in all when making a subcontractor or to manage them well you'd like to choose the best person you'd like to be to be open in choosing them you'd like to avoid bias you would like to follow the, the contractor's regulations and reporting requirements. And most important, never be uh, tempted to make it informal. Make it formal so that there is a written agreement with the provision is set. Thank you very much. I wish you the best.